bizarre situation. Been involved in the game a long time, and this one rates right up there. It's a story that uh, involves your footy club, yep. Jim, the North Melbourne Football Club, and a video revolving around a rubber rooster and a frozen chicken. <laughs> Yep. Uh, and I agree on the surface, it does sound very funny, but it's gone horribly wrong, Jim, and yep. fair to say you boys aren't finding the humour. No, we're not, and uh, we fronted up today, Gary, and we're going to front up tonight because, uh, you know, we're, we try and be a transparent club and we need to deal with things when they strike us, and this one has. So much so, you've had two press conferences uh, yep. today already. Uh, Eugene Rocker faced the press, then the whole football club faced uh, the music as well as a United playing group. playing list. Uh, half an hour ago, we received a call from two North Melbourne senior players who said they'd like to come in here tonight, uh, yep. own up and face the music. So we'll find out the, exactly what's been going on down at North Melbourne. We will. It's been a long day, Gary, but I can tell you this, the only joy I've had in it was going to Punt Road today, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, my welcome. Thanks to Crazy Johns and Carlton Natural Blonde. It's wonderful to be here on the eve of Easter. Gary. Where is he? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Would be a very fair question to ask at this stage, Jim. I haven't seen him all night. Neither uh, have I. The chicken video, I think. <laughs> and it's a serious issue. Uh, well, I asked you to take it seriously, Gary. I, rest assured, Jim, I am taking it very seriously. I think Sam Newman is as well. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please welcome the 300 game superstar, John Sammy Newman. <laughs> see me? I just come in from Louisville. <laughs> Kentucky, you know. Yes. We got a problem, boy. I know you got a problem. <laughs> You've had to address just 40 people at a meeting today. I've had to address 500,000 birds down the hen house. <laughs> you know how big a hole you need to do that, boy? <laughs> and I said, oh, I said, I said, I said it twice. He I said. Like fog, <laughs> he said like foghorn leg I said. <laughs> <see. laughs> Oh, that's my boy. <laughs> and I said, I said, if there's any birds uh, masquerading, moonlighting as porn stars, step forward. Have you ever seen a chook step forward? They, they think I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Two of them step forward. And now they're nuggets. Now look. <laughs> now they're nuggets. I laid down, I laid down the law. <laughs> and it's a serious thing, this. And uh, we just can't afford to have birds running rampant. And uh, first of all, I got a call when I was back in Louisville, Kentucky, a, a month ago with someone called Chicken Nixon. <laughs> and now another catastrophe has blown into our face. Oh. But I tell you what, Jimmy, Jimmy, isn't it? Yes. Jimmy, <laughs> tell you what we're going to do. We might sponsor you. Oh. We might sponsor you. We got the initials, right? Kangaroo Football Club, <laughs> KFC. <laughs> Take a seat. Take a uh, seat if you would be so kind and uh, let's get it's on the been show. pretty savage down the hen house today, Gary. Oh, yeah, well, I imagine it would be. Uh, Jim, as yeah. I said... Do you want some no, of Boris? No, no. no really. uh, you, Eleven Sam. herbs and spices. I think. I no, no, no. One Thank of the you, spices Sam. is off. We're going to hear from uh, two of the senior players are involved. We? Yes, we are, oh, in good. this whole thing. But uh, from your point of view, Jim, what did you think when you first heard this when it broke in the age this morning? Uh, well, I first heard about it at about 10 past 8 last night. I had no idea what the person who rang me was talking about. It was a video that had been posted on the internet, so of course I thought the worst. Uh, you know, something relating to perhaps drugs or any of those sort of... I mean, it's amazing what goes through your mind. And then it took me a long time to actually see it because it had been barred and uh, the links that were sent to me wouldn't work. And when I eventually saw it and, and saw that it involved a rubber chicken, I thought, what in God's name is this about because I had no idea. I'd never heard of it, never seen it. And then, of course, when I saw it in its entirety, I realised that, you know, that we were in some trouble. Um, and events today, how they've unfolded. Eugenia Rocker uh, first yep. uh, faced the media, then the whole football club came out. Now, well, what was the about? first thing that happened was, the, as soon as we heard it was on uh, the internet, we pulled it instantly, obviously. And then we had Eugene as the CEO and the head of the administrative team at the club front up. And uh, I said, Eugene, you've just got to get down there and be as honest as you can about, you know, what's going on. 
We didn't have all the details. We still don't have all the details. So we then had uh, the playing group come to us later in the day and say that we want to take responsibility because uh, we're you know, devastated by uh, the place we've put the club in and it's not what we're about. So they fronted the media as a whole group this afternoon and uh, I thought they handled themselves well in that instance and then we had the two senior players who are going to come on in about 15 minutes and they also want to front up and I think that's commendable. All right, well, we might leave the rest of it until those two gentlemen come out. Have you got a serious question there, uh, Colonel? Well, no, I don't want to have to keep... No, you're going to have to talk like that the whole time. <laughs> Uh, well, well, if I got a serious thing, well, we shouldn't make this anything that it's not. This was a naive, ill-considered gag that wasn't meant to be for public consumption, and we shouldn't turn it into something. It doesn't make it not. right. Yeah, but Sam, it, it, it now is it what right, it is, and it needs but, to be taken uh, seriously. They made the great error of not uh, anticipating the ramifications of their actions. Well, made the uh, some of us do that quite often. Probably made the. <laughs> Well, we <laughs> probably made the grave error in making it in the first place. But then we'll ask the boys yes. about it when they first come, uh, first come out, and that's coming up very shortly. And that is coming up very shortly. But... Welcome back to the footy show. As I said at the top of the show, it never ceases to amaze some of the things that can uh, embroil the football world, and that has certainly been the case today with uh, the news of a video involving a rubber rooster and a frozen chicken. I know, again, it sounds strange. It's not. It's uh, become a very serious football matter. Two press conferences already today from the North Melbourne Footy Club, one involving the whole senior list. Inevitably, when these things happen, the question are who was involved? Well, two kangaroo players have contacted us only in the last hour and asked that they come on tonight to face the music. They are senior players. Can you please welcome the former captain, Adam Simpson, and a member of the leadership group, Daniel Pratt. Always welcome. It's uh, not the circumstances that I'm sure that you'd like to be wandering in here. Um, why did you want to come on? Oh, look, I spoke today, Gary, on behalf of the uh, the playing group about um, you know what had happened and how we all took responsibility as a, as a group. But I thought it was important that, that um, Daniel and I, being the senior players, who were involved in the incident, that we'd we'd, we'd uh, accept our responsibility in, in, in the matter. And um, so we thought we'd come on and, and, and put a hand up and say it was. It was totally wrong what we did, and we're ashamed. We're very embarrassed about the whole thing. Uh, it was, um, you know, it was never our intention to, to uh, you know, harm or anyone. But unfortunately, we have, and we, we understand it. And we really regret it. We admire you both for coming in. It's not an easy thing to do, Daniel. A little bit of background on the whole thing. This rooster, for want of a better term, it's a something that's given out to players through the course of the season? Oh, yeah, look, I won't go into it. It was just a club mascot we had in the pre-season and uh, obviously um, putting, uh, putting the video together or being part of it wasn't the uh, right thing to do and, you know, four months down the track it's, uh, it's left us like this. So, um, obviously very disappointing. Um, you know, it was quite upsetting to be uh, left in this position. We, we, we pretty much uh, left with nothing else to do really but to um, take full responsibility um, being the senior players in the group who were uh, part of it. Now, you can hear already uh, the, the audience starting to smirk and giggle and as I said, <laughs> as I said, on the surface you can look at it and understand that Simo but, yep. but now it's got to the point where this has become a major issue for your footy club. Oh, it has, we've damaged the brand and we understand that and uh, you know Mazda have been such a great sponsor for us over the last 10 years and we'd hate to damage that re relationship as well so uh, the biggest thing that we probably have got to accept is that we did the wrong thing and, and you know, we're more than, we're really embarrassed about it. You know, I'm married, I've got three children, my wife is, you know, she's devastated. We, we, we're, um, you know, it's not about how we're feeling, I suppose, but it, we understand we've done the wrong thing. We never had any intention to, to uh, show that we, you know, we endorse harm to women or anything like that. We just did not, did not even come into our minds, which is hard to think and when you look on it, but... Um, of course, we made the wrong decision and we regret it. Well, Simo, people who watch this out of context, and that has to be remembered because it's not in the context it was originally shown to a very select group of people within the club and it was never, of course, intended for publication, but they will look at that and go, what the hell were you blokes thinking? Of course, and that's, um, you know, you're spot on. And at the time, it was a, there was a lot of in-house jokes in it and it wasn't intended to get outside the... Uh, you know, the private arena, but it did. And um, 
straight away we regret it and we understand that we, we did the wrong thing, you know, and, uh, and like I said, we can't apologise enough and we're going to do everything we can to help out, um, you know, the respect and responsibility um, <laughs> that uh, the AFL are bringing in and we'll be at the forefront of, of, of running that and, uh, you know, if we, we're the face of it, we're, that's great, you know. All right, well, if a lot of people wouldn't have seen what it is that we're talking about, this was run on well, most of the news services tonight. Now, the music's not appropriate. The music track underneath this was something called Move Bitch. Which, <laughs> look, and again, these sorts of things here, in isolation, can seem to be funny, but what's happened as a result of this and the things that you, you're not going to... <laughs> The things you're not going to see tonight is there's a, a sexual connotation involved with it as well, and uh, Simo, I know, well, it ends up getting run over. <laughs> now, I know you very well, and uh, I've been involved with you for a long time. As you said, you've got three beautiful girls. I mean, in my own heart and mind, I cannot ever think that you guys would, would put something that to air like that or even shoot something like that with, in the back of your mind thinking, you know, the damage that this will do to women, but that is how it is now perceived. It is, and we've got to accept it, and that's why we're here. And um, you know, people are laughing about it, but we have offended some people, and we've, you know, we've got nothing but remorse for what happened. And um, like I've been saying, it's uh, it's embarrassing, and uh, you know, we really regret it. You got a lot of very good women, Daniel, who work at that footy club in senior positions, as well as uh, terrific supporters. Have you had to deal with them? Yeah, well, I think 60% of our um, admin staff are, are women. Uh, I've got Jenny Luffman, who's the assistant football manager, who uh, does a fantastic job, and she's with us day in, day out, so she gets to see us from that level, and uh, she's very happy around the boys, and, you know, um, we have a really, very good relationship with her. And then on top of that, we've got the um, Kangaroos um, network of women who works pretty closely with the AFL, as well. So we've got a uh, very strong uh, female culture at the club anyway um, and to go down this path and, and damage it in, uh, in some way um, is, is pretty disappointing. To just say that, you know, that I've been at the club for 15 years, I've pretty much grown up there and, and, and the culture and, and the morals I've learned have, have come from this club and um, it's not a reflection of what we're about and um, I just want to stress that that's not our, it's not what we are and, um, you know, we once again, we really apologise. James, these two boys are here. Um, yep. Now, the suggestion is that the group are involved are much larger than this, maybe up to eight or ten players. Um, the penalty or otherwise, has that been determined for these boys? Well, it hasn't because we sat down as a footy club and said the very first thing we've got to do is get ahead around exactly what's occurred because we've seen in the past... Uh, and I think we've actually done it in the past. Clubs jump in and be very quick to either penalise or not penalise before they get their head around exactly what's happened. And when we, as I said, first found out about it, which was about quarter past eight last night, I said, make sure we know every single thing that's occurred here before we then work out what it is we should do. Uh, we've been contacted by the AFL because the code of conduct is, of course, in place now. We're in step with them, and when we know all the facts, which will be very shortly, we will then work out whether any further sanction needs to happen. But as it stands at the moment, uh, the players are going to be counselled uh, by the representative from the AFL, and I think that's appropriate. They've also donated $10,000 to charities involving you know, groups that will be you know, perhaps disappointed with what's occurred. So, and we've also got, of course, uh, the playing group as a whole standing up and, and being very transparent and owning up to, you know, what's occurred. So, I'm not sure, right as we sit here, Gary, that there's a lot more we can do, but all I can assure everyone is that when we absolutely avail ourselves of all the facts, then we'll work out whether any further sanction is appropriate. And of the AFL, what has been their... Uh, approach to this in response? Oh, well, they've been firm with it, as they should be. They don't put this code of conduct in for nothing, and they've contacted us and said, we want to make sure that you absolutely are doing the right things, and our answer to that was, we want to make sure that we're doing the right things. So, you know, we haven't got anything to hide. We've, you know, I heard some ridiculous statement today from someone that there was another video out there somewhere involving some other thing that is absolutely categorically incorrect uh, there is no such other video and uh, you know we, we're determined guys to get to the bottom of it and once we have we'll work out what we need to do well um, this made, um, you mentioned your sponsors to Mazda uh, involved in this Jim uh, any repercussions from their point of view well, look I hope not um, they're wonderful people as Adam said and uh, they've been terrific supporters of ours for over a decade um, we would be devastated if anything happened to that great relationship but that's what these boys have got to consider when they do anything. 
either individually or as a group, because the ramifications ripple out a lot further than just embarrassing themselves. You know, the major stakeholders in the club get influenced and, uh, you know, it, it affects a lot of people. So now, you've been around a long time, as you said, 15 years. Yeah. This is an indication of the different landscape that you guys play footy in now and maybe the different landscape that all of us in society now live in. Yes, um, I'm yeah. glad you put that in, Gary. Look, this, this is not... This is not the North Melbourne football. This is a community thing. Mm -hmm. uh, should address that to the community at large, domestically, not just these boys. Yes, well, that, but, yeah, well yeah. that's exactly right. I mean, the, the whole the society has changed too in their attitudes to, to various things. That's right. I mean, it's a, a timely reminder for young kids that, that it's, it's so different now than, than perhaps what it once was. Well, if anyone can take anything out of it, it, it is, of course it's changed, yeah. Um, it's, it was, probably wasn't acceptable 10 years ago either. So, um, you know, we understand that. And uh, like I said, we're willing to, to accept what, whatever sanctions are imposed and the landscape has changed. But at the same time, it, you know, we, we accept it. What do you say to the cynics out there who might suggest that this is a massive beat up and that, uh, you know, it's political correctness gone absolutely crazy? Well, it's probably, uh, you know, we've, we've offended um, a percentage of the community. So, you know, we, we see it, or people can see it, as, uh, as something gone wrong. But at the end of the day, we've offended, offended uh, some females um, and, and maybe some other people as well, I'm not sure. But uh, it's, it's pretty disappointing um, to be part of that and be involved in it. So, Simo, what have you got to do to rebuild the brand you've damaged? What, yeah, what are the actions that the footy club has to take and the playing group has to take to re-establish yourselves as, uh, you know, the brand that you were, or that we were? I'm, I'm not distancing myself from... Anyway. Yeah, there's no doubt we've taken a few steps backwards with this and, um, you know, personally and uh, as a club. So, uh, as a whole list, I spoke today about we're going to do everything we possibly can to, to improve uh, awareness of, of this situation and uh, also... Uh, you know, hopefully the brand as well, but we, we, we understand that um, people are upset and, uh, you know, we'll be at the forefront of, of, of doing what we can and whatever sanctions are imposed, we'll, we'll definitely follow through, but any counselling they think the players need to do, uh, uh, and, and Daniel and I, if, we, if they think that's necessary, we'll do it um, and we'll help promote, you know, violence against women and, and all those sort of things because it really wasn't our intention. But we understand it's happened and we've got to accept it. Last one from you, Samuel? No, Gary, I think not only have we covered it, we've covered it all about six times. We could have a break and come back and cover it again. Well, <laughs> it is. But what else do you want them to say? No, look, it's a significant issue. It is. And they can't say any more than they have, and they've done it beautifully, and I think they regret the fact that they didn't look at the long-term ramifications. They're sorry, and they didn't mean anything other than what it was on that uh, piece of uh, home video. And that's it, Gary. That is it, Samuel. And we admire you two boys for coming in and, uh, and facing the music. It's not always the case when these things happen, but I think you've done exactly the right thing. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please thank Adam Simpson. <laughs>